All right, everyone, welcome. It's Coach Christy Deckett Harris here today. I am really excited about our guest. He is someone local um, that we've gotten to know within the community that actually I respect because he's very engaged in the community um, as well as his mobile home investing. Um, what's cool to see is he's taken this strategy. You know, we've talked about multiple buy on land, flip them. He's actually buying mobile homes in parks and renting them. So he's creating cash flow. So I thought this topic was a little bit different um, that we hadn't touched much on, but I want to give you a little background about our guest today. He grew up in West Virginia and graduated from Winfield High School. He also graduated uh, from the university, Bob Jones University. He is actively involved, and I know this because I follow him on social media, and one of the biggest reasons I love him, in politics, and he is currently elected to the West Columbia City Council. Um, he's doing some really cool things in the community, and I'm definitely going to ask him about those. Um, he got started in real estate in 2013, and that first deal, he bought his cheapest house uh, for $13,000, which I know for some of you listening, you're like, I can't even buy a wall for $13,000. So I want to welcome Michael Green here today. Thanks, Mike, for being here. Yeah, thank you, Christy. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. So tell me a little bit just how you got started into real estate in 2013. Tell me about your little uh, bit of background on you being on the council and what that looks like, because I think that's really exciting that you're able to still hold a job that's fulfilling, helping the community, but also, you know, doing mobile homes on the side. Yeah. So, uh, so I started realizing I, I was basically a political consultant for a long time. And so I started realizing, you know, I started going to these uh, retirement seminars and they basically said you had to have a million dollars to retire. And I was like, eh, yeah, that's not going to happen. I don't think. <laughs> sweating going like i need a, an alternate plan <laughs> yeah i'm either going to be eating dog food or you know uh so i so i was like this is and i was just getting burned out because it's a it's a constant drone you know i mean when you're when you're in the political season you're in the political season you know i mean it's a 24 7 grind and um just so much you know i mean you're constantly going so I, I basically made the decision to uh, leave that and I started flipping houses. Um, you know, I mean, I got the, I started watching Dean Gracioni, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've done the program. I'm super familiar. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, I mean, you spend $20,000. Oh, look, and see, here's my picture with Dean. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's so cool. Hey, a lot of people can relate to that because at some level we've been through some education course, which is really cool, so. Yeah, so I mean, it's important for education courses, but don't go to those, I say, don't go to those national guys. I mean, there's plenty of these local people that are, and that's where I really got my help from. I, I got my help more from local people than from any national people. The national people gave me the confidence to do it, but then I started making, meeting the local people here, and they gave me the ability to do the day-to-day -day actual stuff, uh, to get the stuff together. You know, I mean, get, I, I, mean, I got my fin financing from a private money lender here. Uh, you know, I mean, I got help from, you know, him to how to flip the house, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, if I didn't have him to start with, I would be totally up a creek. Uh, and that's why, I mean, I always, I mean, I always encourage people to get involved in these RIAs and to constantly, and I know you're like that, um, you know, that you want people to get involved in, and to contact you or to any other any of the other members are, I mean, they, they're happy to mentor you. They're happy to help you on a project or two. Absolutely. And, then, and, and who knows more about your local community than someone local. So, and, yeah. and what's cool is you being in West Columbia and not, you know, for everybody watching this, they're not necessarily from Columbia, but the growth that has compounded in that area. Like I always saw the potential. It's just like, when is it going to hit? And now when I drive over there, it's almost like a foreign land. It's become so amazing. So like, I appreciate you helping in the growth of our city and bringing all these really cool things in and just supporting that because I think Columbia is an amazing city. Um, I try to get everyone to move here, buy a home, visit, right? <laughs> so um, in the summer, if they have a summer house somewhere else, I guess, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. It's, it's kind of hot in the summer. We're, we're labeled famously hot. And I promise you, we're probably the hottest place on earth. And anyone can attest to that that's visited here during the summer. So 
So that's cool. So you started flipping houses and when did you come across a mobile home or really even realize like, Hey, this maybe could be something. Yeah. So, I mean, it was about, I mean, I had about four, four, four or five houses in, I started realizing, you know, Hey, I'm not making very much money. <laughs> taxes, insurance. Yeah. yeah. Taxes, insurance. I mean, property taxes are a killer. Um, and, and one I had to give up, I had a subject too, and I just gave it back to him because the property taxes went up so high, I couldn't even rent it for, you know, to cover everything. So I just said, forget that. So I, I started, I mean, I, I, I saw a couple of mobile homes and I mean, they were like at five or $6,000. I was like, Hey, I can, I can pay for that out of my pocket. You know I mean? Right. Uh, so I, I got one, I mean, I got one and then, you know, I mean, it just kind of, I mean, sometimes things just come to me. You know, I mean, if you're looking for them, uh, you can constantly find them. I mean, so I got one for, I think, $6,000 and I bought one for $3,000. And then I think I bought another one for $3,000 and, and I bought uh, four of them. They advertised them. They, they started at $32,000 and I got them down to fifteen. dollars This was right before COVID started. <laughs> and a awesome. tree fell, in between in between the negotiations a tree fell on one <laughs> you're like yes amen ten thousand dollar discount well what's cool too is what you're saying is like they're super negotiable and that's what i found you know most people own them free and clear um yeah. they're not always financeable by a bank and they're always not sexy like people don't look at a mobile home and think it's i mean i i literally was laughing the other week i had someone on in arizona that made 90 grand He's doing like a land development and he had posted that online and someone commented and said, oh, I would still never buy a mobile home. I'm like, you wouldn't make 90 grand. Like, it was just funny to me because there's still that stigma that I think some people will never do them. They just are not interested, which is great for us. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm fine. I mean, I'm fine to take an old mobile home and fix it up. I mean, I just say that sometimes, you know, you have to watch what you do. I mean, I mean, the, this this one that we're going to talk about, I think I dumped 30000 into it. That and, was going to be my question on those <laughs> you're getting for cheap. And and maybe some of them didn't require that much. I think it also depends on what tenant you're renting to. What's the max rent, right? Like I tell yeah. people, if I'm flipping it, it's completely different than if I'm renting it. If I'm renting it, I want it to be a nice product. I want it to be affordable housing, but I don't want to overdo it. Like that might not make sense. So in some of these beginning ones you were finding for three and 6000 um, how much were you putting in on average, would you say? The, the one, I mean, those two that I did, I mean, I initially started with trying to do the uh, rent to own on them. Yes. Um, and so, I mean, I did like very little, I mean, just the major, I mean, if something major was bad in them, I did it. Like, I mean, I think the, the one for the 6,000, I think had uh, a kitchen, you know, the kitchen cabinet, underneath the the whole thing was gone you know it's all it was you know it's all that press wood it's all gone so i put in a new bottom to that and i think i put in a couple of doors um i i didn't paint anything i didn't put any vinyl down because it was already all there you know i, I did put in fire extinguisher uh fire extinguisher and, and the fire i saw a post the other day there was a mobile home in one of the communities you buy homes in that caught fire correct yeah, yeah. and and i so my tenant called me like literally at like, this was literally know. like last week, right? Like yeah. last week I mean, well, yeah, the last couple of weeks, she called me in a little, I think it might've been like 10 or 11 or in the morning. She said, Hey Mike, do you know the owner? Do you know the phone number for the owner of the park? It was like, yeah, I do. I mean, but what's going on? She said, Oh, there's a mobile home on fire next to it. I was like, ah! <laughs> I jumped oh, in my truck. The dissolve of your whole life and business. I know. It's I like know. you never want to get this calls. <laughs> I jump in my truck and I stick my hose in there and I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm going to defend so, my mobile home. So there's risk and reward, which is with any property, right? We do short-term rentals and it's like, I can't believe you would take that risk. What if somebody comes in and has a party or does, I'm like, guys, there's a risk in you get, going to your job and getting fired that morning. <laughs> like, I mean, there's uh, risk and reward and everything, but it was funny because it was one behind yours, obviously. Close yeah, it was, it was across the street. But uh, what happened was, is I, I didn't realize is a ember came across the street and basically burnt the field. <laughs> and I mean, wow. it's, 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 so, I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, when I got there, the fire was almost completely out. I mean, the fire department, I mean, the Lexington Fire Department did a great job. I mean, they saved all the, I mean, no other trailer got 
well, I mean, the other trailer, their vinyl siding got burned up. But right. other than that, I mean, they were all saved. I mean, and if you saw some pictures of this, I mean, it was a fireball. <laughs> it was like a marshmallow on a grill. It was like... <laughs> Hey, but you know what? That's a, a good testament to where our tax dollars go. When something yeah. happens, they're there. So like, you know, we just know. get mad about taxes, but it's like, <laughs> hey, you know, like when that happens, you're grateful. So <laughs> um, now on your homes, um, so how much did you actually put in these smaller ones? So I know the one that we're going to see, which is a really nice home. I, I think you yeah. can almost rent it, owner finance, do something creative with that, right? To like recoup yeah. it, put in, but still yet, even at 36,000 in, it's probably cheaper than most houses and it, you know, probably rents the same. So what on average are you kind of putting in homes? Uh, I'm trying to put in like 15 or 20,000 at the most. I, the, um, I would like to, I mean, I started this and I started realizing that I've got to get my return back. I want to get my return back in about two to two and a half years. Right. Uh, all the money that I put in. Otherwise, I mean, it's just out too long. Right. Uh, and so I, I want to get that back as, you know, as quickly as I can um, along those lines. The thing that hurts is the uh, m- most of my mobile homes are in a mobile home park. So I have to pay lot rent. And and two of I mean, two of them are getting pretty high. I mean, it's like three hundred and fifty dollars a month uh, for them. And they continue to climb because it's hard to just move your home sometimes if you don't have a piece of land, another park to move it to. So they know you're kind of at the mercy. I think you're in a better position being an investor. However, yeah. those that are a homeowner, more than likely most don't have, you know, $3,000 to move it and a piece of land. So they'll continue to pay the lot rent. On a flip side, it's what makes it kind of negotiable because if somebody's in a financial burden, they need to sell that because they can't afford the lot rent. So that's why they're also negotiable. Um, are you putting central heat and uh, air or are you just doing the window units? Because I know a lot no, of the- Yeah, I've done most central heat and air. Um, the, I usually, I, mean, I think there's uh, one of my units um, I, that I'm kind of renting to a friend and he's getting pretty cheap rent. Uh, if, I think it's like $530 a month. I, I did not put in- <laughs> I'm going to manage this for you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You should. You're I mean, sweet and kind. I know that about you. Yeah. You have a big heart. <laughs> well, I mean, he also helps me out a lot. I mean, I mean, so I mean, I and I, I mean that I think that's the trailer I got for three thousand, and right. and I did not give him any. I mean, I paid for the materials, but I'm not paying him any um, thing to fix up the trailer. Good. So he painted. You know, he painted. He put in new vinyl siding. I mean. I mean, this trailer just really, this one really stank as I came in. I mean, (laughs) which they do. Sometimes it's like the worst smell you've ever smelled. And that brings me to pets because we were laughing um, before the call about not allowing, and I say not even pets, animals, because now they're service animals. And, you know, it's just, it's great. I love animals, but not inside properties that are my own. And I found out sometimes in the long term, it ends up costing a lot more to fix them. So you kind of have a no pet policy as well now. Right. I, and that's what you got to do. If you're going to rent, you've got to decide all this stuff up front because people are going to call you. I mean, almost immediately, as soon as you put that up for rent, can I have a pet? Can do you use section A? Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, they're going to ask you all kinds of questions. So that's why you need to ask, you know, one of us or, or someone, what are the questions you're going to get? Uh, and you've got to Take have those policy decisions. Down. Where you will you allow people that have had evictions? Yeah. How much rent do I have to make? Right. So we we have requirements within ours too. you know, we look at, OK, what's the rent? Usually we want you making triple the rent because we also recognize you're going to have a power bill. Right. You're going to have a car payment. So I almost think sometimes it's financially helping people manage their money because on the back end, it's just going to be better for you to do you. The last thing you want is someone moving out. Um, yeah. And just looking at that, because the stigma of mobile homes is that people aren't going to stay. They're going to rip it up. They're going to be awful. And I know we've all had those people. I have too. But would you say that people stay for a while in your homes? I mean, is the turnover? Yeah, I, I mean, once I started instituting some of these policies of, you know, of checking their background and also checking their credit. I've had much better tenants um, along those lines. And I, now I will also tell you that sometimes I have very good success with people who've had evictions as well. Um, you know, I mean, w- my one tenant who is doing the rent to own on the mobile home uh, that's in one of my parks, she, uh, you know, she had several evictions, didn't have a good credit score. Um, you know, I mean, and I required, I think, 
to maybe $2,500 down, you know, she came with that money and she, and you know, I, I mean, she basically begged me some and I was like, ah, I don't know, you know, but she has made every single payment on time. Um, and, I mean, and I don't know where she's getting her money from. Okay. But uh, I mean, <laughs> she's cleaning houses. I mean, uh, yeah. but I, I'm still surprised. I mean, for near, and, and I told her that, you know, after three years of making her payments, you know, she will own the home uh, and it will be hers. Um, that is amazing. Good job. Listen, I think sometimes you have to give people a pass um, with the pandemic, with life. What mm -hmm. age did this happen? We, we do this all the time within our property management. It's like, okay, when they were 22, they made a bad decision. I'm like, well, what kind of decisions was I making at 22? Maybe my finances were good, but personally, I might not have made the best. So how can you really judge someone? They're in their 30s now or 40s. They have a family. So I'm very much run the check, ask the questions, and we give free passes too. And knock on wood, it's always worked out in our favor. And you're helping someone, truly. Now, Christy, I will tell you that I saw something on the AOA, um, what is that, the Apartment Owners of America or whatever. Right. They, I don't know if you saw this, but they have an insurance policy that you can buy now for like $10,000. It costs like $600 a year. Um, and, and that will give you, you know, instead of taking a, a deposit of $800, I mean, I think they'll give you up to $10,000 for repairs or for lost rent. If you wow. run, you know, if you run whatever credit checks or whatever things that they have in their background. I did not know that. Thank you for that. No. That's amazing. I, I know. I mean, I thought it was quite amazing too. I mean, and you know, I mean, with a, I mean, a year's lease, I mean, that's like $50 extra a month, you know, I mean. Which is worth it. You know, you think about it and I know people try to cut because you want as much cash flow as possible. So it's like weighing it out. It's like, I don't want to throw this money away, but it's, or it's, I don't want to do this until something happens. I wish I had done that. And I tell people, don't be greedy, just be smart in your business because you'll make money. What? So that brings me to two things. Insurance. Do you insure your mobile homes? Are you able to? Obviously, because, you know, it's a smaller asset. Do you have liability insurance on them? Do you have coverage for your homes if something were to happen, like fire damage? Yeah, I have uh, I have the replacement cost uh, for them. I, I think I have them at fifteen thousand each. And but it did take me it took me a you know a few phone calls and I think it took me half a day or a day to fee, uh, to finally find someone who would insure them. Right, um, because they're probably older. What years are your homes? Yeah, there's one that's a nineteen seventy three. Oh wow! Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it's not capable of being moved. Uh, but uh, I think I have well, I think I have two of them that way. Or one's right on the borderline, 1976 or something. Uh, so, um, I, I mean, and the others are more 98, 99, um, something like that. I, I bought a few at tax sale as well. I mean, I was going to ask if you had, that's a really great strategy because it seems like people kind of just leave them vacant or yeah. pass away and just leave them. Um, yeah, I love that with, with, the strategies of buying them cheap and low, because it's like, you could get one for literally a couple thousand bucks, which is great. Yeah. And you bought up something about moving. I encourage everyone to call your County and ask them what year homes they will allow you to move. And, but also what's cool is those 73 models are still rentable. Like some people right. think things won't last more than five years, but that's not the case. I mean, I'm, I was born in 78. So 44 years, <laughs> these things are like 45 years old. They're still kicking. <laughs> And, and and they're completely good. I mean, there's some people who like to live in a mobile home. I, I mean, they I mean they just like that feeling of independence of not living right next door to a. I mean, a, you know, I mean, not sharing a wall with a neighbor. Right. Um, you might not be able to afford a house. You don't want someone on top of you. I've lived in apartments. It was horrible. Um, taxes. You touched on taxes on your single family homes, and we know taxes right now. Columbia at one time probably hadn't been reassessed for 15 years and everybody was riding those low taxes. And now with all the growth in the pandemic, everything's being reassessed. So give me an estimate of a house that you have maybe um, that's comparable to that mobile home and tell me the tax differences of what you pay annually. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, most of my houses are going for like 750 or 800. So, I mean, I think the um, one house is like, I mean, the taxes are like 1600 on it. Um, you know, 16, I think they're usually around 1500 to, you know, 1800 on taxes, uh, for houses. Um, 
and that's probably i mean it, when you calculate the park you know the park rent that's probably about the same amount to some extent right right you have to take that into account but on the actual physical home what's your annual tax bill on that home would you say oh that's oh, home? oh oh my oh yeah the annual tax bill is like fit i think 54 dollars which is hilarious <laughs> It's almost comical. It's now, like, it's important that you make sure that you get the tax bill. <laughs> correct, because they will be sold at tax sale if you do yeah. not pay the taxes. Well, yeah, and, but they go up. I mean, like my one house, I mean, my one trailer, I, the tax bill was going somewhere else and I didn't, I forgot about it. And so, I mean, exactly. it was like, it was only like $20, but by the time I got it, it was like $70. Yeah, the uh, compound uh, interest of what they add on to it is very high. <laughs> I don't make that mistake. I make sure by January 15th, I list out all my properties and I list out the tax, you know, requirements for them. <laughs> a system, which we talked about as you've gone, you've learned different yeah. systems. So uh, tell me a little bit, because the most of yours are in parks. Are they the same parks? Are they different parks? How did you kind of build that relationship with the park to say, hey, I mean, I'm sure it helps that maybe you're a council member because you could probably use that. <laughs> hey, I'm responsible. <laughs> but for those of us that aren't, how did that relationship kind of get built? Well, I mean, I think the um, the ones that I have, I mean, uh, there's only like one or two, uh, two of them are in like a a you know one of these conglomerate park things, you know uh, that I, I mean I can actually pay my lot rent like they have some website set up, you know, and all that, and they communicate with me. They're like, like the fancy ones, right? Like the more yeah. upscale, systematic, right? Well, I mean, I wouldn't call them fancy in mobile home parks, but. <laughs> They have a more sophisticated system than collecting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One has a more physical, I mean, but I mean, so this one, I mean, the one has a more uh, sophisticated system. The other one has, I mean, it's kind of a lower run mobile home park, but the, but it's, they still have a website and everything. And I mean, after like two years, I'm finally getting set up with that website. Um, <laughs> I know, imagine that. But the other one, I mean, the other two are basically family owned ones, um, you know, that someone owns them. Mom so, and pop, I call them. Those are like some of my favorites where you really know who owns the park. Right, right. The So the one I bought four trailers in one park because a some company in Florida was selling them. Um, you know, I found, I found it on Zillow. You know, I don't recommend that you find them on Zillow because you probably won't find them on Zillow. I mean, uh, and, and I mean, the prices have gone up tremendously for these. I mean, ridiculous. I'm seeing, yeah. I'm seeing mobile home parks try to sell six, you know, a six mobile home park for like $600,000. And I'm like, oh. you're and, like, and I hope that, that works because if it does, I'm going to find some. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, so you can find that. I mean, I mean, most of mine I have found online, but I will say that typically you don't find them online. <laughs> you know I mean? Right. So, I mean, I'm the rare exception to that rule, you know, I mean, that I happen to find some of these online and, but I mean, nowadays it's, you know, I mean, if it's, if it's a mobile home for $3,000, you know, there's 50 people within five minutes, you know, trying to bid on it. Absolutely. Um, so now it's probably going for 15. Exactly. Yeah. So did you find that like, so we'll start kind of with the parks where they were more like family owned or personal owned. Did you find that they were receptive to working with you or were they kind of like, I don't know about this because Sometimes some parks are like, you have to live in it, right? Yeah. Like we don't want renters in the park, which again, that's that's a whole different animal. That's one maybe you can move into over time, but were they open to you having rentals in there as long as they were getting the lot rent? Yeah, they. I mean, they were open to it. Matter of fact, I think for, well, for the, for two of them, I didn't, I quite, I, I got the, tra one or two of them, I got the trailer before I told them. Okay. Uh, and I was like, uh, you know, maybe I, I should have made, <laughs> made the, yeah, I should have made the call before, but I didn't. Uh, and then the one I bought the four in, I think I talked to him before that. Um, and I mean, this is a, you know, I mean, this is a really mom and pop. It's a dirt road, you know, I mean, there's potholes on the road, you know, here. <laughs> I mean, um, it's a, it's an old fashioned mobile home park. I like those though. I think those are good and you can get a good relationship. What do your, we talked about lot rent. What do your lot rents in the park cover? So, so I, I like, tell me one, what's your top rent overall for one of your homes? Yeah. Maybe the oh. one you're going to show us even. Oh, the one is uh, the one, the one I'm showing you is uh, $750 a month. Okay. So and, 750, what's the yeah. lot rent in that park and what does that, that lot rent cover? That one is the lot rent is 250 there. Oh. And, and that just covers uh, the uh, water and sewer. 
Okay, and, that's uh, pretty good though okay. for the water. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, they have, and I mean, you've got to be careful with this. I mean, if I'm the park owner, I don't want a centralized line for all of the park. That's what they have here. I mean, so, you know, I mean, I'm constantly getting calls. Oh, check all your water connections, you know. <laughs> you live and learn about the parks. I tell people have a attorney written le like lease agreement with the park in case they sell it. Ask me how I know because we went through this. <laughs> Make sure you have an agreement. Make sure it's all like spelled out. It's legal. I learned a lesson where they sold the park and then the park came in and started Raising the lot rent, same situation you're talking about. It was one water line on the whole system. Then they had to individually meter. And then we had issues with the meter. So it was like this constant battle. I was like, this is just, this can ruin your whole business. So, you know, live and learn from us. It's good to like know these things when you're buying in a park, you know, is it individually metered? Do they pay the water? Um, because if it's one whole thing, they're trying to find out where the leak is with 15 trailers, yeah. which is for you. Whereas if you have a meter on it, it's very easy to see the meters turning. The leak is in my place. Right. And, the, you know, they're constantly cutting off the water to the whole park and then they turn it on one trailer at a time and all that. I mean, so your tenants calling you like, I don't have water. What the heck is going on? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I call them. I mean, it yeah. Would go back and forth. That's good. These are these are really important things, though, when you're buying an apart, because it's one thing if you own the land, you can do what you want. It's one thing if you're flipping it, but if you're keeping them long term, you know, rate increases. So have you had any issues recently because of, you know, the pandemic inflation happening now? Have they been raising lot rent over the last couple of years for some of your homes? Yeah, well, the two professional lots, I mean, that I'm in, they basically once a year, they raise it $10. Okay. I, I mean, so it's gone. I think I started at three forty-five, and it's now up to three sixty-five a month. Um, and uh, you know, I mean, and and I mean, this one, the the one trailer park that's the the nicer one. I mean, they come, they literally complain about everything. If my tenant leaves a box outside for too long, you know, they're like, ah, oh, you know, you got to get removed this box. You're gonna have a two hundred dollar fine. I'm it's like, almost like an HOA, right? Like, but that's important know. to know because you know go out and look on my porch. I have 20 Amazon boxes right now, you know, getting ready to take it to recycling. So I'm guilty and it's really easy to throw something out there. And if you have a, which is good and bad, if you have a picky park manager, it's nice to know someone's managing it, but at the same time, it's like, really? Come on guys. I know. <laughs> I agree. And sometimes, I mean, th that one tenant has some, uh, she has problems with lupus. So, uh -huh. and, and she doesn't have a truck. So sometimes she'll throw furniture out there. Right. And, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I mean, they're complaining about it and, and I have to go, uh, I have to go and get it, you know, I mean, get the furniture and take it down to the dump. Well, we know you're not afraid to do that. We're going to talk about that at the end of the show, <laughs> project, which is really why I love following on social media. It's amazing. Um, okay, cool. Well, I go ahead and I think just pull up your screen maybe and show yeah. so our viewers can kind of see like, what does this magic mobile home look like? I feel like nowadays, a lot of people have gone in them um but i don't know there's still some people that haven't yeah so this mobile home so I, as i said uh oh there's my instructions um oh nice they, <laughs> hey i got my rules and regulations i don't play <laughs> yeah i'm telling you i mean well i mean even for my contractors i have some i mean which are worse than your tenants sometimes. You have to, like, you would just think it's common sense. I saw on their pickup, like, you know, clean up. I yeah. think it's common sense if you're doing a job at the end of the day, you leave your job site clean. That is not common sense. It is not I know. very common. <laughs> well, my one worker, he loves to write on the walls. I mean, and I just, I mean, it just literally drives me crazy. I mean, That's it drives why. me. I don't know. I mean, he's like, don't use. I'm like, there's only like two or three people in here. I mean, can you not write that on a piece of paper and stick it on the wall rather than writing it on the wall itself? Now, you, you know, know my degrees in psychology. So I'm going to guess his mom had some sort of system as a kid. <laughs> or, he, or he had siblings, right? That would do things. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just crazy. So this is the, this is the one trailer I bought. And I mean, you can see this. Is, I mean, when I, I mean, I looked inside it just briefly. I mean, this was, you know, the part of the 15, I think it was a $15,000 package for the four trailers okay. I have here. And there was a tenant inside there. Uh, and so I just briefly looked inside. I didn't like really, I mean, you know, go inside and do it all. Right, uh, but right. you can, 
I mean, if you see here, I mean, there was actually some, there was actually some weeds growing up through into the, <laughs> into the into mobile the home. Into the middle vehicle. of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into the middle of the house. And, um, you know, I mean, and then in the kitchen area, uh, well, you can't see it quite here, but you can see, you can see some duct tape there. You yeah, know, they, but that this was is awful. pretty good. This was the condition you bought it in. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you're not seeing the the whole thing. I mean, you know, this is that cheap <laughs> linoleum flooring, that square stuff. Right. And here in the kitchen, I mean, you know, I mean, it's I think there's it's ugly pink, you know, for mica there or whatever. Right. And and the sink wasn't connected correctly. So it's like literally a linky, you know, leaky there all down through there. And there's a whole bunch of, uh, you know, black fungal material. <laughs> oh yeah, I know black mold, right? But you're like, guys, this moisture, I get it. But know. you know, you'll hear that all the time, right? <laughs> but I'm not a mold expert, so I have no qualifications to say it's mold. I mean, it myself mold. either. Yeah, and we <laughs> live in a very humid climate, right? So you get yeah. water, you get moisture. Forget it. And and, and don't test anything. Don't test anything. <laughs> no, no, just keep moving. Let's rip it all out and just keep moving. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I tell people even when we're renovating houses, if you have a bathroom that does not have a fan to distribute the air throughout, which there's a lot of old houses in the South, because if you have a window, technically you didn't. I promise behind that wall, there's some sort of mold. Doesn't mean it's black mold, but there's some moisture. I promise it's back yeah. there. So I try to tell people, <laughs> stop reading and watching all the commercials. You know. <laughs> so this, I, and I'm sorry, I mean, I didn't actually take like pictures for, I mean, to for a show and tell on this whole thing, but I mean- no, this is great. <laughs> I mean, so this is the bathroom. I think you can see there, there's a great big crack right there in the bathtub. Yep. I mean, so, you know, you can imagine what was underneath of there as well, too. Yeah, because <laughs> everything, a good point. It's like one big open hole under the mobile home. Everything just goes below it, right? Like there's no yeah. concrete slab or any of that. So <laughs> no, there's no concrete slab. And I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just going on there. I mean, the, the other thing is, is that I found that you should get these one piece surrounds, you know, for this. Yes. I mean, you, know, you want a one piece surround so it doesn't leak anywhere. You know, here it has potentials to leak there and there, you know, I mean, so uh, just the one piece surround as much as possible. Now, this is the uh, kitchen. I mean, I did take some more pictures in the kitchen because I wanted to. I, I really, I really worked my, I really worked more time on these cabinets. You can't quite see all this, but this cabinet over here was kind of leaning down. I so this is the only time I did it. I did put a bracket here to bracket that up, and I also I also refaced all these cabinets. You know, I mean, so these cabinet doors were like really bad. Um, so I I actually took uh, that uh, that cheap uh, plywood, you know, that quarter inch plywood, and put it over top of all of this. I love yeah. that. So how much did that cost you? Because we talk about like cabinet replacement, even if you bought right. some cheap, number one, even if you bought some cheap cabinets, the problem you have is, will they fit? Like if you get a low store bought or even like a regular store because they're mobile home cabinets and it's an old kitchen, but how much did that cost you? Probably not that much. No, I think the sheet was maybe, I mean, maybe like $20. Um, nice. I, I mean, and I didn't realize it, but I pro I mean, I started cutting them out, you know, I mean, I'd be cutting this out and cutting this out, but yeah, I know. Uh, and then like, I started maybe I realizing just one big piece. No, yeah. <laughs> I started realizing I could put the whole piece up there and right. then, you know, there's this router bit that you can just route them out with. There's uh, a tool for everything I found. It's amazing. I, know. Yeah, I, it's I mean, cool. I mean, I was amazed too. I mean, so I took some extra time in here to, I mean, I, it's always good to take some extra time with these cabinets. I also found this uh, if you this countertop here, you'll see later on that I replaced it. I just I just went back over that with the glue and that uh, that formica stuff that's on there. It comes with and, a sheet, right? You can yeah, buy that it, cost effective. Why rip it off? Absolutely. Right. And I mean, you know, in, in mobile homes, it's a very difficult situation because that's not actually like a four by eight, you know. So I had to. I had to go to a specialty store for that. I think I had to buy a five by 12 sheet. Got it. Um, you know, you'll see on the other side, it has kind of the same thing. Um, and so, I mean, just, I, I mean, I glued that down and the router bit just to go right around it. And I mean, it looks really good. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I've been surprised at how that's come out. And then I always, I mean, I, these cabinet doors were really bad. So I bought new cabinet doors there. 
Right. And I mean, I think you can kind of see the flooring there. I mean, yeah, I mean, how water's the killer <laughs> because, like you said, in these older homes, they use part of I call it like um, the cedar chips that you put in a gerbil cage because it's really yeah. like pressed particle board. And yeah. if an ounce of water hits it, it just destroys it. So you have to go back in. So the bathrooms, then, usually the kitchens. Just make sure that, I, I mean, just make sure that no water is dripping anywhere. You have no room for anything. I mean, you can kind of see here. This was the, I mean, we put a new, I put a new door in the back. Um, I, I mean, and you can kind of see all the rot there. And I went back with these, this is PVC uh paneling here that won't rot smart. you know smart and i've learned to build a lot of these mobile homes don't have um overhangs over the door so right. the water just comes straight off the roof and like deteriorates the door so we've even like built little overhangs that help because really in a rental it's like how can i be cost effective over time yeah you want to make things as i mean you want to make things as as nice looking and and, and basically uh, i I'm, i call them almost you know trying to make it indestructible right literally yes yeah yeah <laughs> So, I mean, you, you see here, I mean, I went, uh, I, I found this guy online, you know, it's this, I, I can't remember, it's some guru or something, you know, but he talked about there's two layers of paint. So there's a nice primer we put on here and then we nice. painted them with the, um, the special paint. Uh, so, I mean, you want to spend some time on the kitchen cabinets, making sure that that paint is really good. And that will hold out those kitchen cabinets for a long time. And you can kind of, you can see all the formica that I put on there. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, I know it's under there, but it looks really nice. Yeah. And I'm telling my contractor to paint that piece. <laughs> I love it. I love the arrows. Technology is great. Just send a quick text. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it is. I wanted to paint underneath there, but I don't think we, I don't think we ran out. Now, here's the other thing that I always do in my rentals is, I don't put up a closet door in the kids' right. room. <laughs> Those you, things are always destroyed. Let me tell you, somehow they always get a hole punched in them. I mean, they're really flimsy. They yeah. get ripped off the handles. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you just get a curtain. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, funny story. I have curtains on my boys' bedrooms because I got sick of them ripping the doors open and chipping them. I put curtains because they're five and seven. They can easily pull them open. And it's great. So look, I'm no different. Now I noticed this is a bedroom and you have um, vinyl sheeting. Do you completely get rid of carpet for the most part in your homes? Well, I have, I mean, I've tried to get rid of the vinyl. I mean, all the carpet It is just, I mean. It's gross, really gross. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I don't find that the carpet holds out. I I mean, in two of these trailers that I did, I put in um, um, the, um, the laminate flooring, you know, yes. the laminate plank flooring. Yes. But the problem I had was, is that the floors were not even enough. Correct. Um, so you've, I mean, if you're doing a mobile home, you've got to make sure that that subfloor is nice and level, you know, make sure that there's no bumps. I mean, if you're, if you're hiring a contractor to fix, you know, to repair a soft spot, it needs to be the exact same level as the other floor. Don't let him get by with, oh, uh, that's much like a glue. You know, yeah, same with houses, right? Because it will yeah. happen, but like a mobile home, definitely, because you got to think because underneath the home, there's so much settlement and water that flows, you know, directions underneath it over time they do. Now I do have a guy that can come in and level the home for pretty inexpensive. Like we think of a foundation issue in a house that could be like five grand to 25, a leveling of a mobile home could be like a thousand bucks. So if it's really bad, they can, but again, it's a rental. It's like, does it make sense? Yeah, just make sure that that, I mean, all those floors are, I mean, those, I mean, they don't have to be, I mean, level with that, but I mean, you know, I mean, if you have a piece of, you know, flooring sticking up a quarter of an inch versus the other side or something. Like plywood got, that they yeah. just were lazy and didn't, yeah. Make sure that those contractors level that floor. That is the, I mean, and that's why I have, it, this floor wasn't incredibly level. And so I just said, I'm, and, and I was running out of money. So I just said, <laughs> this is sheet vinyl. <laughs> it looks great. I love the sheet vinyl, actually. I mean, I and put the it other in thing is, is that make sure you don't get the squares, anything that can, you know, say crooked. that something, <laughs> yeah, it's something is crooked, you know? I mean, that's why this is that odd shape thing. And you also want to make sure your toilet seat is down when you take the picture. <laughs> That's okay. I've, I've seen that happen on MLS properties with agents. I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, after I live and learn. Uh, hey, you're sorry. an investor. You're not a photographer. We're not worried about that. <laughs> yeah, this is, the, this is the single sheet, you know? I mean, so, I mean, this is one surround thing, 
you know, I mean, there's no holes in it or anything. So, I mean, I mean, water can't get behind it unless, you know, I mean, something, I mean, they rip it off or something. That looks uh, awesome. Kept the panel I, board, right? Painted over the panel board. No reason to yeah. rip that off. Right. I mean, so, I mean, all the cabinets are there. I mean, you know, as I said, I spent more time with the cabinets and all that. I mean, personally, right. and I mean, you see the nice little, you see the nice formica that's on there. That's just a simple glue and a router, you know, will get to you that. That's great. Um, they spray painted the thing. Now, I will say that you've got to be careful with the spray paint. You know, make sure that they, you know, make sure that you, I think you change, you'll want to change the um, fixtures after they spray paint. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm talking about the, uh, you know, the spray socket. The paint. Yeah, right. Yeah. The socket covers. <clears throat> so, I mean, make sure they, I mean, make sure they do that. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's one of those. Uh, yeah, that was the old refrigerator. I did get rid of, I think I got rid of that one and got a new one. Uh, but I was I was still debating that through this whole time whether I should save that or not. <laughs> you clean it up and roll with it. Sometimes now I have learned a lesson um, throughout real estate investing. I know you have. If a refrigerator has been off, don't ever open that refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> totally don't ever just tape it up and ship it off to the just landfill. Just get rid of that thing. And I had um, a gentleman that worked for me that did that, and it was the funniest and most awful thing ever. I'm like, why would you do that in the dead of summer? And I promise you, he never did it again. Like, <laughs> I, I literally was going to save a refrigerator that someone did like that. Right. And I took, so I took it to the door and I was like wearing a double mask. And I mean, I was still gagging. I oh, was like, it's bad. It's just so I, awful. I finally just stopped and said, okay, this is enough. I mean, we're just on this way. <laughs> it's not worth it. Just get rid of this thing. What okay. do you do anything on the exterior for your homes? I know I go back and forth with this because curb appeal yeah. is everything when you rent. Some of them we've painted like fancy colors just to freshen up because it's usually metal, some are sided, but I haven't. I mean, I haven't painted them, but I have um done this gutter thing. Um, because I, I'm I'm concerned about the water always coming in. Yes. And so that you know, I mean, if you might not be able to see it in this picture, but these mobile homes have like a very you know, like a what one and a half inch gutter on them yes very small and the roof is like your biggest killer because what happens yeah. is it not only comes through the home but the side of the inside of the walls and that causes right. the walls to rot out in the windows correct yeah so i mean you know i i didn't take i didn't do the gutters on this but i will be doing the gutters on this i've done the gutters on several other mobile homes great um to i mean to try to get a little bit bigger gutter and to make sure that those gutters are, I, I mean, if you take care of the roof and the gutters, I think that that will really save a lot of your mobile home and, and these windows, you know, I think those are the three, you've got to make sure that your home is dried in, you know, I mean, right. and if it's not, I, I mean, I've just seen so many times that this, uh, something gets, I mean, and you can probably see it here some, I mean, you can see like a stain coming down here. Yes. You know, that's a break in the gutter. So guess what? I mean, that water runs right there and potentially run right in that window. And if it's not out. sealed and cause a bigger problem within the wall. And what's it's cool for those of you that don't know on these roofs, it's almost like they're at some level indestructible because there's a product called Cool Seal. Yeah. Um, when the roofs start to kind of get water spots in the interior, it's almost like a tar you can get from Lowe's or the mobile home store and kind of go in and reseal that too, which should help with some of that. But I'm with you with the guttering and the covers over the porch. We found that was like a lot of the wear and tear over time. I, I totally agree. And the, the other thing that I always have a problem with is, is measuring the windows. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it make sure that you, I mean, make sure that you figure out how to measure these windows. <laughs> I usually just measure them. I mean, I, I've just started measuring them from the outside, the lip. There's, so there's a lip there. I mean, from lip to lip. And I mean, I will tell you, I mean, I go down to, you know, the affordable housing guy. Yep. And, you know, Terry. he's very, yeah, he's very sarcastic sometimes. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I, need a, I need a window 30 by 35. There ain't no 35 window. It must be a 36 <laughs> window or a 34 window. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like a 34 or 36. And you're like, uh, and he's like, well, which way did you measure? You're like, I don't know. Like, geez, just tell me, you know, I'm going to take a picture for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling, I mean, that guy has, I mean, and just make, I mean, if you have to take the window down there, I mean, take the window down there, but get the yes. freaking right size window that you need. 
Correct. Uh, same with doors. If you have to replace yeah. doors, same thing, because it can just be a headache. And and the thing about those windows, which is good, is they're much cheaper, cheaper than regular windows. The thing that's bad about these windows is they're very thin glass. So you have yeah. to be careful they don't shatter getting them back to the mobile home. <laughs> that's We've had that happen too. I know. Well, I had one window. It was a it was a bigger window, and somehow it shattered when the guy stuck it. I mean, when uh, one of my, my workers was sticking it in the truck, and it went, <laughs> it got catty cornered and shattered. And I was like, crap. <laughs> we had him in our SUV one time, and like hit a bump, and you're, Ur! and I was like, you got to be kidding me. We just left the store, and sure enough, there was a crack in the whole thing. I was like, uh. But some of them I mean, are double paned, like they're double like a storm window. So sometimes you can take that piece out and replace, which is good. And but. Even if you even if you get a new, even if you get a new paint, the paint is like eighty dollars for right. a pane of, of glass. I mean, you might as well just go and buy the new window again. Uh -huh. True story. Glass is not glass has never been cheap, and I'm assuming with the economy, it's probably even more expensive now. But like even a glass fix on a window in a home is a lot yeah. when you get a glass company to come out. And then to get that right size of glass, because you know they can't cut the glass. You know, I mean, I think they can't cut more than they can't cut less than a quarter inch or something or half an inch of glass usually. Really? I, I literally, I mean, one of the mobile homes I got a piece of glass for, and it took me three tries. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> I'm done. I, I was like, okay, I'm getting a new window. I mean, that could be a whole business, like, you know, just delivering to people that have mobile homes. If you're really good at measuring, you could create a whole sideline because it really is. They just have weird, different, unique nuances than houses. So like, if you don't know those and it's your first one, it's really confusing or you're overpaying for stuff when you really didn't or need to, or you bought a tub that wasn't at the affordable housing store and you bought it at Lowe's and now it doesn't fit because they're not the same dimensions, right? Weird little things like that you learn. So now with um, all of your, I'm going to stop that there, with all of your um, mobile homes now, how many do you actually have? And like, what does your cash flow look like? What is that like done for you in your life? Yeah, so I have six of them. And I think the the four, I mean, the four in that park that I have, they, I mean, that gives me about, that gives me almost two thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I mean, with rent. I mean, Amazing. I know. I mean, I, it gives me about as much rent as my. Uh, I mean, as all my other single families take in. Now, I mean, some of those that you know, I. I mean, I think I cashed out refi one. I mean, two of them. <clears throat> right, and you can and reuse that money to reinvest. But let me ask you this, because this this is a really good question. Looking at your single family homes versus your mobile homes and maintenance over time. If you looked at like a year with all of your units, are you getting that much more maintenance calls? Is it costing you more to have the mobile homes than it is the single family? Are you finding it's pretty apples to apples? I think it's pretty much apples to apples. I mean, I as I said, I try to make my things indestructible. And I mean, you want to make sure that, I mean, pull on them, you know, I mean, pull on stuff, you know, and see if it if it falls off or something or, and you want to, <clears throat> As long as you have your sewer and water completely, you know, I mean, as indestructible as you can get it, you know, don't buy that plastic. I mean, don't buy that cheap plastic stuff that they come out with, you know, for it's gonna the break. It, it's going to break. I mean, I mean, try buy real metal, you know, I mean, buy the metal faucets, you know, I mean, the, the metal, you know, for the showers, buy buy the single hand. I always try to buy the single handles if I can. Um, and that's something you learn landlording and just having properties over time, what lasts and doesn't. And if you really need to borrow my children, I'll bring them over and they'll show you if it's indestructible in five minutes. <laughs> they do that in my own home. I hey, think everything's a, indestructible and it is that not. Can be a bit, that can be a business of its own. <laughs> we will we will try to bring the Harris brothers and we're just going to let them have at it. We're going to lock them in there for five minutes and see what makes it. <laughs> Oh, this is amazing. Well, I appreciate you sharing all this because I think this is so valuable, but I want to touch on you personally yeah. um, because I think you have something really cool you're doing in the community. So Noah and I laugh because we'll see Mike around town in West Columbia and all of a sudden he started this big shopping cart movement. So tell me a little bit about all the shopping carts and what you're doing. Yeah, so I started seeing shopping carts like abandoned on the side of the road, especially on the US-1 corridor. And there's some on the 378 corridor too. So I, I mean, I, I was like, I, I started taking them back. And then I was like, well, you know, I'm going to start documenting these. And I mean, and, and then I was like, well, okay. And then everyone was like, really? I mean, it kind of became a little joke, I think. I mean, I mean, not, I mean, 
I mean, but I mean, it was a funny joke. And, and so then we came up with the, I said, well, I need to come up with a name for this. You know what I mean? So some people, I think one person said, you know, let's make it the Kardashians. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, another one, I, 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 they, I can't remember what it was. I mean, cart return or, or cart sweeper. So, I mean, you know, I kind of finally settled on the Kardashians because I thought it was kind of funny. You know? That's amazing. I love that play on words. And it's cool because it really does make your community look bad. And like, we love our community and you're driving around like, what? and for the grocery stores, they're losing money. Why are these carts over here? So it's like such a cool thing that you're doing local community wise. And, um, and the weirdest place I found one was uh, up on the uh, on ramp to I-26 uh, from US-1. And I mean, it was like right there, like over in the middle. I'm like, why in the world would someone I mean, push this all the way up the hill and around the curve and then leave and then, it and then leave it? I mean, uh, it's just bizarre. I mean, so it is. And it's it's cool, though. It's great to follow you. And it is like, haha, funny, but funny, because it's like you think of all like sometimes we look at our community and we think, what can we do? And I'm, I'm very big on this yeah. with right now that's going on in the world. And we seem to think it has to be something big. So when we feel like it has to be something big, guess what we say? Well, I can't do that. I'm too busy. And I think the impact you can make is can be so small or so big, something really that you think might be small, might be big in a different respect. So I love like what you're doing. Um, and and that's it. That, that's the that's that, I think that's the key to that's the key to making something bigger is doing <clears throat> and you, you know I mean there's a book I think it's it's doing one percent more every day oh you I know? haven't read that that's good yeah, like it's that. this guy who I mean I can't remember it's this guy who ran like uh 26 marathon or 30 marathons and you know a month or something wow I, I don't know how he did it but um one <laughs> percent he did a little yeah. bit at one time incrementally doing if you have a house you know you're doing i mean make sure that you do one thing you fix one thing a day <clears throat> you know and i mean those little incremental things of doing you know of, of picking up two shopping carts one day you know over time that's i mean that, that could be 60 shopping carts in two months yeah. or you know or or, or one <clears throat> you know i mean one week i mean you know one day a week you're you're doing something of picking up trash or something and, and it's tremendous. I mean, you can make a big difference just by doing that. <clears throat> you start a movement because of social media now, it can be really powerful in a bad way and in a great way. And people start right. watching that. And then they're like, oh, I can do this too. Like I'm driving through the parking lot. I see that. So it's it's just cool to see the community activity too. So yeah, and we have a great lady here in West Columbia, Connie Vaughn. I mean, she literally picks up trash all the time. <clears throat> And I mean, she is, in, I mean, she encourages me to pick up trash and she encourages, she's gotten other people to help her. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, just go on the side of the road and pick up a, a few bags of trash and then move on. It's amazing when you put your energy in the positive route, like what it brings. And you brought up a point, Hey, I haven't done a lot of marketing. Mm -hmm. I just kind of come across these deals, but I believe that's, you know, we talk about the law of attraction and what you're putting out there. And I believe things yep. come your way for a reason. And I'm a true believer in that. What are your goals, um, business and personal for 2022? Yeah, so I mean, my goals uh, for business wise is I've got to get my accounting system down. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I, I, I'm always I'm always running a little bit behind, but I started to get that together, and I also I mean I want to do some more marketing, and, and I want to. I'm trying to help mentor some other people. There's a couple of people that have come to me and they're like, I want to get involved in real estate. And I start telling them and one of them is actually doing something. So, you know, I hope that that works out. And I mean, I mean, I'm fine to help mentor people along. Um, and, and I mean, even do a joint venture to start with, and then you're off on your own. And I mean, you can do it. <clears throat> right. So I, I want to do something with that. And I've got to get a, I want to get at least, you know, one or two uh, more houses this year and maybe do a, and I need to do a flip. So I always try to do one or two a year, kind of. I mean, I, I'm not, and I need to have some more really higher ambitions, you know, more goals. <laughs> you know what? I don't think you do. I know. And I have come from a standpoint of we've done so many houses and we can continue to do that. And I love doing that. But our goal is really the passive income. So yeah. we don't have to do 20 rehabs like we did five years ago because it's just not necessary. And maybe we can pour our energy into doing something we really love. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I see people doing lots of rehabs and I respect them. I don't want to be part of that. That's not where I'm at now. So I think for each, some, you find out what works for you, works for you is different for me. 
That's what I love about real estate. Um, and you've got the cash flow now. So it's like, cool, yeah. if I could just get two grand more, what does that look like? Right. That's amazing. So um, I think that's good. Any personal goals of anything you're like want to put out there? So I can hold you accountable for the Oh, year. no, but I, I do need to get <laughs> to the gym more. And I have uh, I have a high sugar level <laughs> of uh, diabetes. So I, I need to do some more exercise. And, you know, I'm I mean, I'm there. I'm getting there at 51, you know, so I'm I'm an I'm, a, I'm an older guy. So I've got to start exercising more. My my you know, my joints get stiff some. Um, yeah, they do. I'm full yeah, I know. and I feel it. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, I need to, I need to try to, you know, I, I think I need to get the personal trainer that will hold me accountable as well. But I mean, you know, I mean, just going and exercising, you know, two or three times a week, you know, with some weights and doing some different things along those lines. Oh. I mean, that really, that really helped me, but I kind of got out of it and then I got to get back into it. Create the habit. I know me too. Yeah. I actually, um, with <clears> a couple of <throat> college roommates and a girlfriend, we're running a 5k in the outer banks in oh. April. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna put it out there because now I have to do it and I'm committed. Everything's booked and it's forced me to work out and do more because it's like, you gotta do it now, right? So I if you need you. help with that, reach out, we'll come walk with you. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> awesome. Well, I just wanna thank you again, Mike, for sharing your knowledge today. I appreciate it. If anybody wants to find you online to follow you on any social media platforms, is there a good place to go? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm on Facebook majority of time. So it's uh, facebook.com forward slash R E P M green. That's rep M green. Uh, no E on the end. Uh, and, and I mean, that's pretty much, and my email is rep M green at gmail.com as well. And you got a TikTok. Don't lie. I saw that. TikTok. Oh yeah. I got it. I'm starting TikTok. I mean, we're trying I, to, I'm trying to, I mean, so hey, if there's, if there's anyone out there that really knows TikTok, I mean, I would like to do some more videos uh, with TikTok and I've done a few, but I want to do some more and, and kind of, I mean, I think it's just kind of funny. I mean, <laughs> I think so too. Sometimes I'm in the house laughing and I'm like, I would watch this. This is hilarious. This is what I do watch. And it seems like, seems like you have to be really engaged all the time, which is hard, right? So you yeah. have to like maybe set yourself to do it, but it seems like a cool platform for people to see because even the mobile home stuff, I mean, people aren't familiar with it. It'd be a cool way to get it out there. So, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm amazed. At, I mean, I, I've done like two or three videos. And I mean, I think one got a thousand views. I mean, which I'm kind of surprised. I mean, it was a story time about my prescription medicine and how I got it cheaper. Uh, oh, because I, I called my it. insurance company, you know, I mean, <laughs> I complained to my insurance company enough and I finally figured out a way to get it cheaper. That's uh, big. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, I was surprised. I mean, and I, I mean, I've learned a lot from TikTok as well. I mean, I've learned Dang. some good Excel tricks. <laughs> I've learned some good other tricks. I mean, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not saying it's great. Okay. I mean, you got to watch, <laughs> you got to scroll past. You got to understand. You got to keep moving, right? Maybe you can <laughs> yeah, learn you some good moving. dance moves too. There's some <laughs> it's cute though. You know, my kids even love it to like jump on there because, you know, we say technology is so bad, but last night we had the girls over from next door and they were all playing Mario Kart. And I said, you know what? They're engaging and having fun and laughing. That's just their way of connecting, right? It might not be ours. We think you got to put the technology down. I think it could be a great resource. I think it can be a bad resource. So just use it right. So, and I will tell you, I mean, I've met people from Facebook that I only knew on Facebook and then I meet them in person and it is, I mean, it, it's like, Powerful. Oh, wow. Hello. How are you? I mean, and it's created and it, and it allows us to create a really good uh, community there. I mean, uh, especially, I mean, you know, with some people in my church, I mean, you know, we constantly go back and forth with different things. I mean, uh, people, I mean, like you, I mean, I met you on Facebook. I mean, I know. I love it. <laughs> I, I feel the same way because realistically we have been cooped up and we have small kids. We don't get out. And it's yeah. really cool to see like this can be powerful you know, I don't have to show up to every networking event, even though I'd like to, it just doesn't happen. So I'm with you. I, I love it. So again, thank you so much for your time. This has been amazing, Mike. You're awesome. Thank you for all you do for our community and keep mobile home investing. All right. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.